what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we got a special one here uh we back on the metric system i know it's been a minute uh but i've been checking out some different videos with emergency vehicles and different things like that and you know i see the odometer I see the kilometers and sometimes i even try to drive myself you know and see if i know the difference i think i can tell the difference a little when i'm driving uh uh, kilometers versus miles per hour i think when it comes to kilometers at least what it shows is like 30 more 20 30 maybe 40 more but that's just what i see you know that's the most i've used the metric system or trying to understand and trying to learn but we checking this video out but before we get into that i do have a music channel y'all check that out if you got some requests um but mainly doing a lot of swedish a lot of finnish some other different countries but it's been good listening to some good music if you're a music fan check that out I do have patreon all that you just seen too but we hear the metric system explained for americans so your boy doing a little learning today doing a little bit of learning uh the channel i don't even know how to say that but y'all subscribe to the channel link is in the description for you guys but let's learn about the, the scientific community and the whole world, except for America, are certain that the metric system is better than the freedom system, also known as imperial. In the freedom book system. Wild Thing by Josh Bezel, he writes, In metric, one milliliter of water occupies one cubic centimeter, weighs one gram, and requires one calorie of energy to heat up by one degree centigrade. The imperial Nine. system, what? on the other hand, was invented by a drunk. <laughs> A quarter is about one inch, a man's shoe is about one foot, a guitar is about one yard, a runway at a large airport is about one mile. <laughs> Which is crazy. I ain't gonna lie, because most things we do have, we do have metric system calculations on everything. Uh, dang, I always try to find, I wish I had objects laying around, so let me see, I ate some chips the other day. So see, we do have imperial and the metric system because on this bag of chips i do it has both on there it has both you know i got the ounces and the grams stuff like that uh dang i wish i could i wish i had like a cup or something you know a soda can we do have both but i i just put i stopped this because i wanted to talk about the foot thing i was like it wouldn't make sense because everybody have different size you know, everybody's foot, feet are different. Somebody's foot is big, somebody's foot is small. So my foot might not be your foot. I wear a size 11, 12 some, most time, between 11 and 12. So a person with a size 6 shoe probably couldn't get up to the same amount of feet as me. That's why I don't make yeah, sense. Yeah, that seems reasonable. And the conversions are even worse. One mile is 1,760 yards. One yard is 36 inches or three feet. One foot is 12 inches. Oh, you want to convert from smaller units to bigger ones? No problem. <laughs> one inch is one twelfth of a foot. One foot is one third of a yard. And one yard is one divided by the subscribe button. <laughs> it's not that hard, guys. Divided by the subscribe button. Like, what are 2,799 yards in miles? Don't know? Well, silly. At all. It's about 1.59 miles. You should have known. The imperial system isn't hard. But what are 2,799 meters in kilometers? I mean, the metric system is so bad that you can't know. Oh, oh, right. I don't even know. You're just at a point. It's 2.799 kilometers. Oh, wow. Didn't even need a calculator for this one. See, this, this is why I struggled a little bit. Especially, I would say in science, because math, we got little charts and stuff to help us. But science, for sure. Science, for sure, struggled a lot. But math and science, both, I would say both of them. Shoot, I struggled with both of them until I got to high school, at least. But, yeah, the the metric, the, the, the things, be they don't be adding up correctly to me. And the funny thing is, Here with the, imperial the Americans crazy. that hate on the metric system, even though it's without question superior to the imperial That's system, same easier. doesn't realize that Americans also use a ton of metric measurements. Volts, megapixels, 
kilotons and megatons when it comes to TNT, the nutritional food labels with grams or milligrams yeah. as metric values, or the millimeter you use for the caliber of your <laughs> firearms. That's right, your guns are tainted with Europe. Now with that like, out wow. of the way, let's look at how the metric system works. More specifically, we'll talk about the coherent international system of units or SI system for short. There are seven base quantities in the SI system. Time, length, mass, electric current, thermodynamic temperature, amount of substance and luminous intensity. The first three are the most important ones for our everyday life measurements. Yeah. Each of those quantities gets a base unit. Time is measured in seconds, length is measured in meters, mass is measured in kilograms because yeah. someone thought grams aren't as lit, current is measured in amperes, the amount of substance is measured in moles, and the brightness is measured in candida. So see, this is all these things. I feel like we got a lot more metric though. I can't say we got a good amount of metric more in science. But it's like it was going back. It was kind of in between both just because uh, I feel like with math, they almost intertwine. But we because we had these different charts, you know, if we looking at feet and all these different things like that, when you go to science, it was a little bit more metric. But then you thinking of your mathematic conversions, which was imperial for the most part. Which was a struggle. That's why I feel like that's why I struggled because it was like intertwined between both at most point. You might have a question. It might have metric system, you know. Then you might have a question. It might have the imperial system. Like it was like an intertwine. I feel like we had to learn both, but we mostly learned a little bit more metric in science, math, not at all. But I feel like everything was still evolved, you know surrounded with the imperial system the temperature is measured in kelvin and you might scream why not celsius and yet true celsius is widely used in our everyday life but kelvin is used in science especially physics more often but they're practically the same system anyway and we'll get to that you can combine those base units to make One way newton. fancier units like the unit of force a newton or the unit of electrical capacitance the ferret mm. I ain't done this stuff in so long, but man. My brain hurt looking at that. But what units get too big or too small, and we don't want to write out too long numbers? Introducing prefixes. Those are one of the biggest reasons why the metric system is so much better than the imperial. I can't stress enough how awesome they are. Seriously, you just write something in front of a unit, and it changes the number however you want it to. If your number is too big, try scaling it down using the prefix terra. You can even do it with the fancy new units, like the Newtons. The prefix system isn't hard to learn. The base is okay. that it moves in steps of thousand, except there are some extra at the beginning. Going up... Okay, I feel like I remember this. I think we did that. I'm tell Yeah, we did. Okay, I do know these for the most part. Yeah, or I used to know these. I ain't been in school in a minute. But I do remember the Decta, Deca Heto. Uh, kilo, mega. I do remember all these. Probably, I think we had a list of these in science class, though. In science class, we have yep, the base with no prefix. It's ten been a times minute. larger than this is deca. Ten times larger than this is hecto. Ten times larger than this is kilo. A thousand times larger than this is mega. A thousand times larger than this is giga. A thousand times larger than this is terra, and so on. All the way up to the newly added. I think we went up to Peta. That was the most I remember. We might have went up to Quetta. more. I don't know. You might recognize With the some names. of those prefixes from kilometers, kilo, mega, giga, and terabytes, or something else entirely. Go so see, of course, 20, it had 2022 up there. So I don't remember Yoda or Zeta or X, but I remember up to Peta. That's about it, but we probably did up to Yoda. Kilometers, I kilo, mega, giga, and terabytes, or something else entirely. Going down, we have the base with no prefix. Okay, ten times yeah. smaller than this is deci. Ten times smaller than this is centi. Ten times smaller than this is milli. A thousand times smaller than this is micro. A thousand times smaller than this is nano. And so on, all the way down to the fresh new prefixes, ronto and quecto. For example, one quectometer is about the length of my... 
<laughs> what in the world? Why did we cut at this point again? <laughs> For example, the shortest possible well distance, in. the plank length, is about 0 0.000016 quectometers. Quite you might me. recognize some of these prefixes from centi and millimeters, deciliters, nanotech, or something else entirely. This makes conversions between units incredibly simple. You just add zeros That's or take them away simple. in order to change a unit. It even works with different units that are already raised to a power. For example, one cubic meter is one billion cubic millimeters. And obviously, we care about water a lot. So, yeah. one cubic decimeter is one liter of water or one liter in general, and one liter of water weighs one kilogram. It also means that you can estimate the volume of a human pretty quickly by knowing their weight. If a human weighs 60 kilograms, about a normal weight, the person has a volume of about 60 cubic decimeters. Since humans are mostly made out of water, so the density of a human is roughly the density of water. Mm. You can't do things like this in the imperial system. Now, let's talk about temperature. Under normal pressure, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and freezes at 0 degrees Celsius. Initially, it was the other way around, but after the guy mm. who invented the system died, we just flipped it around because we liked <laughs> it better that it gets hot when the number rises. The absolute zero, the coldest temperature that can never be reached, is negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Kelvin thought that it would be better to have the absolute zero as the value zero. So we set up a new scale with the same distance between steps to the Celsius scale, just mm. with a differing starting point. To get from Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273.15, and the other way around, you just subtract it. Fairly simple. Yeah, very now look simple. at the calculation to get from Fahrenheit to Celsius. See, this is this is why I I can say this is why I struggled. It was just too much. I remember being in college, and we were working on an equation. That joker took like almost two pages, two full pages, just to get one answer. One, not multiple answers, just one answer. Yeah, they they make things difficult. It's other chaos. It's more the Fahrenheit simple system is the odd one out and not really used in science at all, except to communicate temperatures to the American public. I might have to, have to start converting into metric It's really myself. unuseful in science. This was a short explanation about the basis of the metric system. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you were switching to metric soon. Yeah, well, Other than that you're used to Imperial, there's no reason to stay there. If you did that's enjoy true, this video, maybe leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot to me. Now this was good, this was good. Uh, yeah, metric just makes more sense. It just makes more sense. Y'all make sure y'all y'all subscribe to his channel. But yeah, I feel like we did both and it, it was like a collide. It could mess you up. It could mess you up for real. Just because I I just remember being in college, taking physics and calculus and forgot to convert. We had we have certain calculators, I'm sure y'all no, the well, the the T eight the T ninety T eighty some T something those T series things or something like that those type of calculators you know make your brain hurt calculators yeah I remember I forgot to convert I had just took my calculus test and I forgot to convert it to like the scientific which like I said science physics was mostly in the metric system I forgot to convert it and I bombed a whole test. Due to the fact that I didn't change some simple settings. So it's like you don't even think about. You shouldn't even have to think about changing these settings in the first place. But that's what happened to me. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm doing. I was confident. I was I was confident, too. I just knew I was doing a great job. But psh, I got my test. I looked. I'm like, wait, I did that. I did that. Because, you know, when Professor Grady, you your test, they kind of show you how to solve it. I'm looking, I'm like, I did that. Then I looked at my calculator. Wrong conversion, wrong conversion. So there's a conflict right there. There's a conflict right there. But that's all I have. Yeah, like I said, I've been driving. I get my I get I get my little metric system workout, brain workout when I'm driving. 
So if I'm going 50 miles per hour, I'm looking, I think it's 80 kilometers or something. I don't know. It's been a minute. It has, I think I haven't seen, did that probably since last week. But I'm going to start paying attention, get those that stuff down. But that's all I have for this video. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Y'all be blessed, be the best, and be you. I'm out.